a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Jimi Hendrix James Marshall Jimi Hendrix was an American rock guitarist, singer, and songwriter. Although his mainstream career spanned only four years, he is widely regarded as one of the most influential electric guitarists in the history of popular music, and one of the most celebrated musicians of the 20th century. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame describes him as arguably the greatest instrumentalist in the history of rock music. Born in Seattle, Washington, Hendrix began playing guitar at the age of 15. In 1961, he enlisted in the U.S. Army and trained as a paratrooper in the 101st Airborne Division. He was granted an honorable discharge the following year. Soon afterward, he moved to Clarksville, Tennessee, and began playing gigs on the Chitlin circuit, earning a place in the Isley Brothers backing band and later with Little Richard, with whom he continued to work through mid-1965. He then played with Curtis Knight and the Squires before moving to England in late 1966 after being discovered by Linda Keith who in turn interested bassist Chas Chandler of the Animals in becoming his first manager. Within months, Hendrix had earned three UK top ten hits with the Jimi Hendrix experience. Hey Joe, Purple Haze, and The Wind Cries Mary. He achieved fame in the US. After his performance at the Monterey Pop Festival in 1967, and in 1968 his third, and final studio album, Electric Ladyland, reached number one in the US. It was Hendrix's most commercially successful release and his first and only number one album. The world's highest paid performer, he headlined the Woodstock Festival in 1969, and the Isle of Wight Festival in 1970, before his accidental death from barbiturate-related asphyxia on September 18, 1970, at the age of 27. Hendrix was inspired musically by American rock and roll and electric blues. He favored overdriven amplifiers with high volume and gain, and was instrumental in utilizing the previously undesirable sounds caused by guitar amplifier feedback. He helped to popularize the use of a wah-wah pedal in mainstream rock, and was the first artist to use stereophonic phasing effects in music recordings. Holly George Warren of Rolling Stone commented, Hendrix pioneered the use of the instrument as an electronic sound source. Players before him had experimented with feedback and distortion, but Hendrix turned those effects and others into a controlled, fluid vocabulary every bit as personal as the blues with which he began. Hendrix was the recipient of several music awards during his lifetime and posthumously. In 1967, readers of Melody Maker voted him the Pop Musician of the Year, and in 1968, Rolling Stone declared him the Performer of the Year. Disc and Music Echo honored him with the World Top Musician of 1969 and in 1970. Guitar Player named him the Rock Guitarist of the Year. The Jimi Hendrix Experience was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1992 and the UK Music Hall of Fame in 2005. Rolling Stone ranked the band's three studio albums, Are You Experienced, Axis, Bold as Love, and Electric Ladyland, among the 100 greatest albums of all time, and they ranked Hendrix as the greatest guitarist and the sixth greatest artist of all time. Ancestry and Childhood Jimi Hendrix was of African-American and black Canadian descent. His mother Lucille was an African-American from Seattle. His father Al was a black Canadian originally from Vancouver, Canada. His paternal grandmother, Zenora, Nora, Rose Moore, was African-American and one-quarter Cherokee. Hendrix's paternal grandfather, Bertrand Philander Ross Hendrix, was the result of an extramarital affair between a woman named Fanny and a grain merchant from Urbana, Ohio, or Illinois, one of the wealthiest men in the area at that time. 
On June 10, 1919, Hendrix and Moore had a son they named James Allen Ross Hendrix, people called him Al. In 1941, Al met Lucille Jeter at a dance in Seattle, they married on March 31, 1942. Al, who had been drafted by the U.S. Army to serve in World War II, left to begin his basic training three days after the wedding. Johnny Allen Hendrix was born on November 27, 1942, in Seattle. He was the first of Lucille's five children. In 1946, Johnny's parents changed his name to James Marshall Hendrix, in honor of Al and his late brother Leon Marshall. Stationed in Alabama at the time of Hendrix's birth, Al was denied the standard military furlough afforded servicemen for childbirth. His commanding officer placed him in the stockade to prevent him from going AWOL. To see his infant son in Seattle, he spent two months locked up without trial, and while in the stockade received a telegram announcing his son's birth. During Al's three-year absence, Lucille struggled to raise their son. When Al was away, Hendrix was mostly cared for by family members and friends, especially Lucille's sister Dolores Hall and her friend Dorothy Harding. Al received an honorable discharge from the U.S. Army on September 1, 1945. Two months later, unable to find Lucille, Al went to the Berkeley, California, home of a family friend named Mrs. Champ, who had taken care of and had attempted to adopt Hendrix. This is where Al saw his son for the first time. After returning from service, Al reunited with Lucille, but his inability to find steady work left the family impoverished. They both struggled with alcohol, and often fought when intoxicated. The violence sometimes drove Hendrix to withdraw, and hide in a closet in their home. His relationship with his brother Leon was close, but precarious. With Leon in and out of foster care, they lived with an almost constant threat of fraternal separation. In addition to Leon, Hendrix had three younger siblings, Joseph born in 1949, Kathy in 1950, and Pamela 1951, all of whom Al and Lucille gave up to foster care and adoption. The family frequently moved, staying in cheap hotels and apartments around Seattle. On occasion, family members would take Hendrix to Vancouver to stay at his grandmother's. A shy and sensitive boy, he was deeply affected by his life experiences. In later years, he confided to a girlfriend that he had been the victim of sexual abuse by a man in uniform. On December 17, 1951, when Hendrix was nine years old, his parents divorced. The court granted Al custody of him and Leon. First Instruments At Horace Mann Elementary School in Seattle during the mid-1950s, Hendrix's habit of carrying a broom with him to emulate a guitar gained the attention of the school's social worker. After more, than a year of his clinging to a broom like a security blanket. She wrote a letter requesting school funding intended for underprivileged children, insisting that leaving him without a guitar might result in psychological damage. Her efforts failed, and Al refused to buy him a guitar. In 1957, while helping his father with a side job, Hendrix found a ukulele amongst the garbage that they were removing from an older woman's home. She told him that he could keep the instrument, which had only one string. Learning by ear, he played single notes, following along two Elvis Presley songs, particularly Presley's cover of Lieber and Stoller's Hound Dog. By the age of 33, Hendrix's mother Lucille had developed cirrhosis of the liver and on February 2, 1958, she died when her spleen ruptured. Al refused to take James and Leon to attend their mother's funeral. He instead gave them shots of whiskey and instructed them that was how men were supposed to deal with loss. In 1958, Hendrix completed his studies at Washington Junior High School and began attending, but did not graduate from Garfield High School. 
In mid-1958, at age 15, Hendrix acquired his first acoustic guitar, for $5. He earnestly applied himself, playing the instrument for several hours daily, watching others and getting tips from more experienced guitarists, and listening to blues artists such as Muddy Waters, B.B. King, Howlin' Wolf, and Robert Johnson. The first tune Hendrix learned how to play was, Peter Gunn, the theme from the television series of the same name. Around that time, Hendrix jammed, with boyhood friend Sammy Drain and his keyboard-playing brother, in 1959, while attending a concert by Hank Ballard, Hendrix met the group's guitarist Billy Davis. Davis showed him some guitar licks, and later got him a short gig with the Midnighters. The two remained friends until Hendrix's death in 1970. Soon after he acquired the acoustic guitar, Hendrix formed his first band, the Velvetones. Without an electric guitar, he could barely be heard over the sound of the group. After about three months, he realized that he needed an electric guitar in order to continue. In mid-1959, his father relented and bought him a white Supro Ozark. Hendrix's first gig was with an unnamed band in the Yaffa Room of Seattle's Temple de Hirsch Sinai. But after he did too much showing off, the band fired him between sets. He later joined the Rocking Kings, which played professionally at venues such as the Birdland Club. When someone stole his guitar after he left it backstage overnight, Al bought him a red silver tone Dan Electro military service before Hendrix was 19 years old. Law enforcement authorities had twice caught to him riding in stolen cars. When given a choice between spending time in prison or joining the army, he chose the latter and enlisted on May 31, 1961. After completing eight weeks of basic training at Fort Ord, California, he was assigned to the 101st Airborne Division and stationed at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. He arrived there on November 8, and soon afterward he wrote to his father, There's nothing but physical training and harassment here for two weeks, then when you go to jump school, you get hell. They work you to death, fussing and fighting. In his next letter home, Hendrix, who had left his guitar at his girlfriend Betty Jean Morgan's house in Seattle, asked his father to send it to him as soon as possible, stating, I really need it now. His father obliged, and sent the red silver tone Dan Electro on which Hendrix had hand-painted the words Betty John to Fort Campbell. His apparent obsession with the instrument contributed to his neglect of his duties, which led to verbal taunting and physical abuse from his peers, who at least once hid the guitar from him until he had begged for its return. In November 1961, fellow serviceman Billy Cox walked past an army club and heard Hendrix playing guitar. Intrigued by the proficient playing, which he described as a combination of John Lee Hooker and Beethoven, Cox borrowed a bass guitar and the two jammed. Within a few weeks, they began performing at bass clubs on the weekends with other musicians in a loosely organized band called The Casuals. Hendrix completed his paratrooper training in just over eight months, and Major General C.W.G. Rich awarded him the prestigious Screaming Eagles patch on January 11, 1962. By February, his personal conduct had begun to draw criticism from his superiors. They labeled him an unqualified marksman and often caught him napping while on duty and failing to report for bed checks. Although Hendrix had signed up for three years of service, Captain Gilbert Batchman had had enough after one year and made the case for Hendrix to be discharged, as his problems were judged to not be treatable by hospitalization or counseling. An alleged ankle injury during a parachute jump gave Hendrix the opportunity to bow out of active duty with an honorable discharge. On May 24, Hendrix's platoon sergeant, 
James C. Spears, filed a report in which he stated, He has no interest whatsoever in the Army. It is my opinion that Private Hendricks will never come up to the standards required of a soldier. I feel that the military service will benefit if he is discharged as soon as possible. Included in the Army's discharge request were various statements from fellow soldiers, all of whom thought Hendricks deserved to be discharged. On May 31, Captain Gilbert Batchman signed a report which alleged behavior problems, requires excessive supervision while on duty, little regard for regulations, apprehended masturbating in platoon area while supposed to be on detail. On June 29, 1962, Captain Gilbert Batchman granted Hendricks an honorable discharge on the basis of unsuitability. Hendricks later spoke of his dislike of the Army, and falsely stated that he had received a medical discharge after breaking his ankle during his 26th parachute jump. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?